Hello listeners, John Cole reporting to you live from Jerry Adams House here around the uh, Belly Murphy estate. Only one of ten houses Jerry Adams owns or should I say frequents for various reasons. Well it's the festive season again and we have a couple of cream crackers in with us tonight. Namely Lord Jerry Fitness here, John Hume is here, Ian Paisley, Cattle Daily, uh, of course who recently retired so he's due for a bit of verbal abuse. And we also expect a few personalities to come and go as the evening progresses. Well, we're going to have a brilliant Christmas dinner, probably a fucking pot noodle, but anyway, beggars can't be choosers. And we'll also be having some, funs and, some fun and games and maybe the odd Christmas carol. And we'll also be playing Spin the Bottle with Bernadette McCallisky. Fuck, that should be some fun. Now, we do have Robert here tonight by public demand. How are you, Robert, by the way? Well, let me tell you something. I'm shitting myself, so I am, in, in case I get shot. Jerry Adams, he's safe enough here tonight, isn't he? Well, well, for a start, I don't think my men are sorry the provost. Uh, we'd waste a bullet in that there. Uh, in fact, I don't even think they'd waste a baseball bat beating him. Um, but as far as I can say, uh, as long as he doesn't say anything out of line, he'd be safe enough. Right, well, Ian Paisley, I must say that I'm really shocked to say the least that you're here tonight. Why? Well, uh, there's free food for a start. Uh, and I wanted to see uh, what sort of house Mr. Adams was living in. Uh, considering the amount of robberies he does, uh, but by the look of things, I think his robberies have been uh, 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 something of a failure because his house is terrible looking. It's an absolute disgrace. Right, I see. Well, Dr. Paisley, I uh, don't think that was very nice, but uh, what about his new book that he brought in? Well, uh, let me say this here. I've heard that he's sold ten copies uh, of his new book, Before the Dawn. Uh, it should be Before the Bomb. Uh, uh, so I think he has enough money there to get himself some wallpaper. Right, but seriously, Dr. Pizzi, what do you make of his house? Well, uh, you've heard about the house that Jack built. This house must have been built uh, by uh, Muckamore Rejacks, because uh, look at the paintwork, it wasn't done by Van Gogh. More like fucking Van Morrison, it's an absolute disgrace, so it is. Right, well, Jerry Fit, what do you make of Jerry Adams' house? Would you live in it? Let me tell you something, I wouldn't even fucking shit in it. Um, no, it's not bad, but uh, he should have moved the toilet uh, from uh, outside uh, yard in indoors, up upstairs at least. I mean, it would freeze a fucking bollocksy right out there. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, oh, by the way, Jerry, uh, before I continue, you need some uh, shade rule. Well, um, I left a newsletter out there this morning. Uh, did you read the headline on it? Don't let them wipe your eye. It wasn't wiping me out of that there. What did you wipe your arse on then, Jerry? I'm a hanky. Oh, I was wondering what that shit was doing in your nose. Right, gentlemen, we have Sir Patrick Mayhew here tonight. Sir Patrick Mayhew, welcome. And I hope you're enjoying Jerry Adams' Christmas party here in the Belly Murphy estate, are you? Well, I wouldn't say that, though, because I've been slapped in the face four times, I was kicked in the bollocks and called a fat bastard. And I certainly don't mind getting slapped in the poop in the bollocks, but uh, I'm certainly not a fat bastard. Well, I take it you have no more than the house, uh, Sir Paddy. Right, right, now hold on a minute. Jerry, fit you want to? Yes, I want to ask uh, Jerry Adams, where's a fucking drink? Well, I hope you brought a carry out, Jerry. What do you mean, brought a carry out? You'll be fucking carried out, where's a drink for God's sake? Ah, uh, right, now come on, give it over, Mr. Fit. We don't want to be starting any of that old scrapping. Right, now hold on a minute. Uh, I, I, uh, I want to make this clear. I told you all to bring your own drink. We don't have enough liquor in this house. Well, here, Mr. Fit, I found something under the sink, so I did. Do you think I'm gonna drink fucking furry liquid in the mess this bleach of an earth thing coming, you dopey fucky? Right now, come on, gentlemen, give it over. John Hume, it's nice to see you here at this Christmas party. How are you enjoying it? Well, I'm very pleased to be here tonight, and I'm absolutely delighted with the turnout and that both sections of our community can come together on such a festive time. And I hope we can all drink and be merry, because that's what it's all about. Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, Hume, I think you can get off your knees now. There's no TV cameras rolling in here, so it is a party. Right, I see. Well, we do have Dick Spring in here tonight. Dick Spring, what's it like to be back in Northern Ireland, especially in Jerry Adams' house? Well, I think it's uh, an absolute pleasure to be here in, uh, in the north of Ireland and uh, amongst friends. Amongst friends? I'm not your friend, you skinny bastard. You're that thin you can smell the shite through you. Have you eight beans you come out in lumps? They're no friend of mine, son. Dick Spring! Dickhead, more like it. Oh, I thought I was the only dickhead here. 
Mr. Rollins, do you have a television and a video? Well, Robert, there, uh, there's no such thing as that in the Bally Murphy estate. Not unless some electrical shop has been robbed. Um, uh, I don't have uh, a video and I don't have a t TV, I'm sorry. There is a video up the stairs, like. You're trying to lure me up the stairs, so you so you can do something to me? I'm not going to fuck any of you trying to insinuate something, son. No, but seriously, I have a video tip here that looks good. Well, what do you call it? It's, it's, it's called the Drum Craze Standoff. Well, you better not fucking play out in here. So, right, come on, Jerry. Fuck's sake, leave him alone. Here, come on, Jerry, sit down. Robert, Robert, sit down. I got son. I got me for fuck all. Right, come on now, Jerry. Sit down, for God's sake. He's only a young lad. Leave him alone. Well, he's not fucking playing that shit in my house. Right, uh, what do you want to drink, or John Hume? Uh, well, I think I'll have a black rice, and I think I'll need one. Uh, Mr. Hume, this is not a her house now. Now, tell me what you want to drink. Mr. Adams, I've already made it clear to you. I told you what I want. I want a black ration. Look, Mr. Hume, I know you've got a dose of horn and all the rest of it, but you'll have to wait till you get home and sort that out. Well, fuck it. Just give me a bloody Mary then. All right, I see. Couldn't have a black ration, so you pick on a wee Catholic girl. You should be ashamed of yourself, you fucking. You're a disgrace. Uh, Mr. Fit, what do you want to drink? Uh, let's see. Now, I think I'll have a Harvey Wallbanger. Jesus Christ, the perversion's hanging out of both of you tonight. Um, Catherine Daly, what would you like to drink, son? Uh, well, if you don't mind, Mr. Adams, I will have uh, a Malibu with some ice and a uh, lemonade. Well, I don't think I have any Malibu. I think you all think you're in a crown bar. Uh, looking for all these fucking exotic drinks. Um, you'll take a tan of harp, and if you don't like it, you can fuck up. You can have it between you. Well, uh, excuse me, Mr. Adams, but I will not have anyone uh, talk to me like that because I think it's an absolute disgrace to talk to a man of the cloth uh, in such a manner. Oh, sit there, Cobb, stop your fucking whinging. Right now, Barry McGee, beg your pardon, spit the bricks out, my old builder house. Barry McGuigan, I believe you're going to go back into the ring, is that right, and fight for a charity? Uh, why are you going to do that? Well, I think he just likes getting his bollocks snapped in. Oh, no, hold on a minute. No, if, I, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to do donate some money to the local church, uh, and it certainly won't be... Uh... I hope it's not the chapel you're talking about, Barry. No, it will be the chapel. Now, Barry, uh, any more of that, I'll stick my boot in your bollocks. You have a box in the next time from a wheelchair. You don't scare me, you little runt. You're not the size of a good shite, for God's sake. Don't give me that about the pineapple. Right now, Dr. Pizzi, cool it off a bit. Right, we do have His Royal Highness Prince Charles here tonight. Welcome to Northern Ireland, uh, Charlie, if you don't mind me calling you that. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for inviting me here tonight. I'm absolutely delighted to have received this <coughs> in invitation. Sorry about that, Charlie. Sorry, son. Carry on there. But I think that was fucking disgraceful. But uh, as I was about to say, uh, it's a great to have this uh, invitation and I'm um, also delighted to have this opportunity to uh, meet such fine politicians uh, who are uh, doing a great job for the people in Northern Ireland. All right, for fuck's sake, get off your knees, big ears, step your crawling. Right now, Jerry, give it over for goodness sake. Well, Prince Charles, how did you join your flight over here to Northern Ireland? Well, uh, by the look of them fucking ears of his, they're pretty sore after that flan. Right, come on now, Jerry, there's no need for that, for goodness sake. Right, Charlie. Well, it was uh, quite an experience as I myself was piloting the aircraft at a, uh, an altitude of 10,000 feet. All right, big ears, so what, you can fly a fucking airplane? Sure, anybody can fly an airplane, for goodness sake. Let me tell you this here, Mr. Fit. You couldn't fly a fucking kite, never mind an aeroplane. Right now, come on, gentlemen, give it over. Right, Prince John. Jesus, Jerry, you went to the fucking toilet. Sorry about that, really. I'm really, a, I'm, I'm very apologetic. I'm, I'm sorry about that day. And that's before I get my fucking my grub as well. Right, Prince Charles, right, before we were interrupted there. Now, before you met Lady Di, of course, it's all over with. We're all very sorry to hear that. Oh, my well, fuck, I was on the cards. I don't know what you was doing running around a, a, a ganch like that there in the first place. Right, come on, Dr. Pizzi, leave him alone. I believe after, whenever you sort of met Lady Dyer, before you met her, that uh, you chased after another old scrubber in Toon Gabby, Australia. Is there any truth in that? Well, uh, I suppose there's an element of uh, truth in that uh, statement. Uh, in fact, uh, prostitutes in Australia are very tight. Ah, uh, big ears. Keep it fucking clean, son. There's no need for that there. 
No, I, I mean with money, because before I met Diana, I met this pretty young lady who insisted I should buy and pay for everything to which I did. Well, take all women the same. How did you know she was an old slapper anyway, Charlie? Well, one particular night I suspected she was uh, two-timing me. And uh, so I put her house under surveillance. I'd have put her house in fire with her fucking in it. Right, Jerry, let him finish. And in that uh, particular time, that night, I seen 25 men going in and out of her house. So I said to myself, good golly, she must be an old slapper. Uh, so now I know why people stopped us in the middle of the street and said, oh my God, she's a queer operator. I used to think that she was some sort of telephone exchange person, but obviously not. So you were buying the chocolates, and every other fucker was eating them. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, well, something like that. Sure, look at the size of your fucking lugs. Every bit of wonder that wee girl was running about in Australia with a mattress strapped to her back. Sure, look at you, you've a snit on you like a cooker hood, for God's sake, you fell for your strike oil. You have lugs on you like a shankle taxi with its back doors open. Right, come on, Jerry, I think you've fucking destroyed him enough for... Now, would you believe we do have a major coup here tonight? We do have President Bill Clinton. Welcome aboard, President Clinton. How, do you, how long do you plan to stay here in Northern Ireland? Well, it's a pleasure to be here in Northern Ireland amongst many uh, friends, uh, including Mr. Readams. Uh, or, excuse me, Bill, it's Adams, not Adams. Well, I was told it was Adams. Oh, Bill, it's fucking Adams, not Adams. Well, I was told uh, that it's Mr. Readams because you're the big cheese in the IRA. Oh, Bill, now there's no fucking need for that there. Come on, now, knock it in the head. Now, I would hit you on it at my security stopping this fundraising in the United States. Well, I would take a bigger man than you, Mr. Readams, uh, because, uh, uh, as you know, I'm a very powerful man. You're a powerful gobshite, that's what you are. That's it. No, you are going to all gang up on me because I'm the only American in here. No, because you're the only gobshite in here. That's why we're going to gang up on you. Right, come on now, for fuck's sake. Well, how long are you going to be staying? Well, uh, I think it's going to be a very short while because I have a lot of things to do in the house, like the, the garden. I've got to... Uh, Paint the house, uh, fix the washing machine. Let me tell you this here, Billy. You wouldn't know what a washing machine was if I'd hit you in the fucking head, for God's sake. Uh, you're right, Dr. Pacey, for the first time in your life, because uh, if a washing machine dropped on my head, I'd be fucking dead, you asshole. Uh, don't you speak to me like that. Right, come on now, Dr. Pacey. I'll knock the bollocks out of him. He talks to me like that. Right now, come on in. Sit down, sit down. There's no fucking need for that. That was very sore. Shut up, you bollocks. Right, come on, for goodness. Sorry about that, Bill, anyway. Right, we do have Barry McGuigan in here. As, like I said, Barry, you're going to go back into the ring. But before we do uh, go on about that, we're going to ask you about your relationship with Barney Eastwood. How was that? Well, at the start of my career, uh, Mr. Eastwood was very good to me. Uh, he treated me like I was one of the family and uh, that means he was taking 25 pounds housekeeping money off me and uh, but that all changed because uh, he used to wipe his shit from under my arse and now he's throwing, he's throwing it in my face uh, so uh, he got a wee bit demanding and uh, he, he didn't even allow me to stay up after 9 o'clock at night so that meant I had to go to bed early although I didn't mind because I was giving the wife 10 rounds Ten rounds of what? Cheese and toast? Who are you trying to get, Barry, for fuck's sake? You're full of all my dog's crap, so you are. Huh? Mr. Pussy with the pull of cracker with me? For fuck's sake. Long as there's no wires hanging out of it coming out of this house. No, it's not. There's no need for that. That was a fucking derogatory remark. Right, come on, pull it. Here we go after two. One, two. I want it, so I did. I want it. I'm reading a joke, I show you. Give us that fucking thing of reading no joke out. I'm reading that joke out. Right, did you hear about the Irish magician? He couldn't pull a rabbit out of the hat, so he pulled a hair out of his hole. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> that's a lot going on. I didn't think that was fucking funny at all. That's a lot of bollocks. You're damning the Irish people. Well, it was in the fucking cracker. What do you expect me to do, you bollocks? Right now, come on, gentlemen. Let's get this back into perspective here. Right now, we're going to speak to Mr. Adams again. Right. Uh, Mr. Adams, you're... Um, we do have a slight problem. I'm here because uh, it's getting a bit cold. And uh, I want Mr. Fit to go out and get some more logs for this fire. It's burning out. Well, I'm your man, Jerry. No problem. Where do you keep your logs? Up next door. Here's a hatchet. Away you go. There's a tree out there. I'm fucking sure I'm not going to need to chop somebody's tree. I'm wearing a good suit, you know. 
If I get caught, I'll get six months in prison. Well, that's a general idea, Jerry. Now get out there and get them fucking logs. We're all going to freeze to death. Right now. Let's settle it down. Right, I'll go and get the fucking things. I'll be back in a minute. All right, all the bed. Jesus Christ. Barry, did you see the colour of his suit? Jerry Adams' suit is shining for fuck's sake. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Pussy, when I saw him first, he near blinded me. I thought it was a knight in shining armour. A fucking knight in shitin' armour, more like it. All right, here, let's have a drink here. Uh, Prince Charles, what do you want to drink? I think I'll have a... Yes, I'll have a heavy wall banger. Sounds like a fucking punishment beating in uh, the Baller Murphy estate. Um, right, let's see if we can get this poured in. Give us a drop of fucking harp there. Get that into that glass. Oh, yes. Excuse me a second while I get a slug of this. Oh, yes, that's very nice indeed. Uh, oh, dear, sorry about that. Right now, Jerry Fit, I think he's coming back. Hey, hold on. Uh, um, uh, Jerry Fitz at the door. I think there's something wrong with him. Jerry, what's wrong with me? He was up a tree, uh, and I fucking fell into the branches, and uh, I hit my back, and I've cut my head, and the blood's running out. Here, I hope you're not getting fucking blood all over that carpet. I'm going knock a bollocks right out of you. Uh, Jerry, do you think you're going to have to go up the hospital, son? I'm a fuck. I'm not missing my Christmas dinner for no 